From the deserts of the east, a thousand years ago, arose a mighty empire. Within a hundred years, it had become a medieval superpower. Its unifying language was Arabic, and its religion, Islam, lay at the heart of its power. Much of the knowledge and many of the inventions produced by the Islamic world are still with us. For example, what has this piece of ancient technology got to do with this, my bicycle? Master carpenter Marty Jobson and I will recreate and test some of the early Islamic world's most amazing inventions. Roving reporter Amani Zain is going to travel to where it all took place. She'll be exploring the stories behind the golden age of Islamic discovery. in the 10th century, the Islamic Empire was so vast that it stretched from Spain all the way east to what is now Pakistan. The ideas and the inventions of the Muslim world have had an enormous and lasting effect on the world we live in today. Islam was born in the searing heat of the Arabian desert. Most of it is a vast, featureless ocean of sand, scrub and rock. The early peoples of Arabia were nomads who travelled the sands on camels. With little or no landmarks, it was vital to know where you were going. It was too hot to travel during the day, so journeys were undertaken in the cool of the night. In the cool of the night, the only things to see were the stars, and as they remained constant, it was a short step to learn to navigate by them. Astronomy was virtually abandoned in the Europe of the Middle Ages, but in the Islamic Empire, the science flourished. Across the Islamic world, from the deserts of Arabia to here, Al Hamra in Spain, these early astronomers probably worked from minarets in mosques just like this one. Their understanding derived from the direct observation of the stars, so they began to understand exactly where the Earth sat within the universe. One of the greatest of these men was El Sufi, who in the 10th century named all the visible stars. The Arabic names like Aldebaran, Altair and Algol are still in use today. But probably the greatest feat of Islamic astronomy was achieved by al khujandi He was able to complete the most staggering of calculations, which helped close the book on an age-old question. The seasons changed because the Earth's axis is tilted, but by what amount had been one of the great astronomical questions of the day? We get seasons because the Earth is tilted in space. Here we are in space, here's the Earth, the big red ball is the Sun, and this is what's called the plane of the ecliptic. Now suppose the equator was in the plane of the ecliptic like that, then we would have no seasons. But it isn't. The point is the Earth is tilted like that. Here we're tilted away from the Sun. If we were like that, the Sun's rays would be coming much more directly than they actually do in winter. Anyway, here we are going through the seasons now. We're getting to sort of February, March, April, May, and then finally June. And we've now got to midsummer, and we've still got the same tilt, but now we're tilted towards the sun. So the sun's rays are now coming much more directly, longer days, hotter sun, that's summer. The first chap who realized that the Earth is tilted was Eratosthenes, the brilliant Greek mathematician who lived in Alexandria and worked out the circumference of the Earth more than 2,000 years ago. But he didn't know what angle we were tilted at, and astronomers worked on that for ages. It turns out that what you have to do is to measure the highest elevation of the sun in midsummer, and then the lowest in midwinter, take the angle between the two and divide it by two, and that gives you this angle of tilt. And it's about 23 degrees. But more than a thousand years ago, a Muslim mathematician and astronomer called al Kujandi worked this angle out with incredible precision. 
Advances in understanding the movements of the heavens enabled men like al Kujandi to create the most accurate calendars and almanacs of the age. These were vital for the precise timing of religious rites. The Prophet of Islam is Muhammad and the religious spiritual home is Mecca in Saudi Arabia. But its heart is the Kaaba or black stone in the center of the mosque. Islam means to surrender, surrender oneself to God. It marked the beginning of a new religion, a new civilization, and a new empire. Then, just as now, the Ma'azin calls the faithful to prayer. There are prayers five times a day, at dawn, midday, afternoon, sunset, and evening. Islamic prayer times are astronomically determined and change from day to day. It's vital to know exactly when they are, so the Arabs developed an extraordinarily accurate machine. In the early days, the Arabs got their prayer times from, well, probably sundials or maybe water clocks. But then along came the high-tech astrolabe. And this is it. Well, this is one. There are many, many of them. Very beautiful brass things with dials on both sides. And they work by stereographic projection. That's bringing the heavens down onto the brass plate. And I don't understand how it works. And fortunately, Emily Winterburn does. She's curator of astronomical instruments at the National Maritime Museum. Tell me about the astrolabe. Uh, well, its name comes from Arabic to mean star taker. Right, so it literally takes the stars exactly. down. Exactly, yes. yeah. This bit is, is basically the stars flat. Right. So what are all these little pointy, the little pointy bits mm -hmm. sticking off? Each one is, is a bright star that you, that you should be able to see easily with the naked eye. Okay. So you've got Aldebaran. Oh, right. Um, and Altair. Alt yeah, exactly. And so it's the very point that points exactly. at them. Exactly, the very, that? very tip. That's, that's where the star is in relation to the other stars. OK. And then this bit here is uh, where the sun is the over, the, over a year. Yeah. OK, so suppose we want to tell the time. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we do first? OK, well, first of all, you find... So if you're, if you're doing it in the day, yes. you find the height of the sun. Well, we don't have any sun. with typical, you know, cloud. But let us imagine that the mm -hmm. sun is just coming through that window over there. OK. What do we do? You would hold it up by okay. the ring. Like this? Yeah. Right. OK, and because it's the sun, you wouldn't look through it. You would, you would get the sun to shine through... Through, through the holes? Exactly. OK, so I'm imagining... I'm not, I'm not, not looking at the sun, mm. I promise you. And you hang it from your finger so gravity is keeping it vertical, yeah? Exactly, yeah. yeah. OK, so that's nicely lined up now. OK. There you are. I hand it over to your... OK, so from that, you can, read the de you can read the degree, right. degree scale. So that tells you the height above the horizon that the sun is. Once the height of the sun relative to the horizon has been set against the day of the month, the exact time can be read off from the hour markings around the edge. In our case, it's 8 a.m. Can you use this to predict things? Yeah, you can work out... Uh, when the sun is going to rise and set, so important.